out from absolutely nowhere, we've just bagged ourselves a Pedro now up to the tune of 60 million euros plus an additional 3 million in add-ons. If you're asking his agent, Jorge Mendes, he believes he's been sold for an absolute bargain, if not for injuries. Pedro now would have been sold for 100 million minimum, but that's the question, right? His injuries haven't been too kind to him. Even when he came back to more consistent fitness last season, he still missed 23 games out and over 120 days worth of football due to suffering hamstring injuries. Now, there is a very fair argument that when you sustain such a serious injury to your knee and your ankle, you're going to need more time to get back to full strength and full speed. He needed that minimum of at least two years of football before he's found more consistency back in his game. Could we argue we are now signing Pedro Neto at the perfect time when he's showing now that he is getting past his injury woes. In 20 games last season, he had 12 goal contributions that was 9 assists and 3 goals and it's very safe to say that there was 2 Wolves teams, one with Pedro Neto and one without him. And after all the interest he attracted based on last season's performances, it only makes sense now that we move in the shadows. We move secretly to tie this deal down before things caught wind and blew up. So today, my friends, I'm here to discuss Pedro Neto, what to expect from him under Maresca, and dissecting the best parts about his game. So if you guys are pumped and excited, man, hit that like button for Pedro Neto. Let's try and get 3K likes minimum. I know you guys can do that. And let's get straight into things. <laughs> These players, man. Listen, I'm getting tired of seeing this or seeing that. Next season, I have to see some new sellies now. Come on. Anyway, quick taste of Neto cuts inside left with disguise shot and boom. That is a goal. And immediately, we are seeing an example of the dual threat he brings down either flank. Look at his directness. I think that's one thing a lot of fans have really taken to when it comes to Neto. And I'm talking about fans across the Premier League. This guy is a dynamic, aggressive, forward-thinking style player. This is a great goal versus Spurs. You know, completely takes out Emerson. Nice little Cruyff turn to dead the ball then. And look, his head is up. He's not just doing things with his head down and making it up on the spot. There's a purpose behind this play. And that purpose was, I need to draw and attract the attention of that Spurs defense on me and hope one of my dumbass teammates is gonna be in that box to receive the cutback. And that's it. And we know that Wolves, they are synonymous with struggling to score goals. Oh, that's a nice dummy. Oh my Lord. Okay, let me go back to that, man. <laughs> Bro, I just love like school for moments like this. One more time, one more time. Oh, completely took dunk out then. Yeah, that was a long, long, long step over, but he's got that explosion and pace just to get to that byline anyway. Oh, bro, like to think he's been out with such serious injuries like his knee and ankle. When you watch his performances last season, does it suggest that he's still struggling physically? And this was a moment last season. I know this is doing rounds on the socials right now. Yeah, completely does did us then. I feel like I've seen wingers like Mares and a few others, they, they have these particular games against us where they just completely move to us. And then they're like ready then for the next stage by signing for a better team. And that was his audition he passed. But this is an example of Neto. It's not just direct play in open spaces, right? It's about how he shields the ball with his body. But most importantly, the quick feet in tight spaces. I love these multi-dimensional attacking threats. They can beat you in distances. They can beat you in short distances. They can combine. They can beat you so many different ways. It's very hard to stop. Ben can't do nothing there. The little drag back shimmies. Still the ball. Oh, little drag back to the left away from Enzo. Little dummy. And he's retained possession then. Okay, that was a nice uh, cross field pass. Oh, and that's a penalty straight. Now, we got the most pens last season. And that's because we have these dynamic like dribblers in our team. That's one of our best parts of our game. So, I, this makes sense why we had to add another winger to this team. And Neto has that Premier League experience. He's shown his threat last season in the big games in particular. And... I agree with Jorge Mendes, if not for injuries over the past two years, I think this guy is already at a bigger club. So I'll be getting a bit of a bargain here. Now, one thing I love about Neto too is his crossing. 
Last season, Pochettino lamented the fact that we didn't have that strong set piece taken. We had a few, but not like incredible ones. But Neto's crossing, for me, is like one of the best parts of his game as well. And if the plan and vision is to sign an Osimhen, this is the service strikers need and want. Look at this um, cross right here then. Powerfully, but he cuts inside, shimmies it in the same movement. Boom, and it's a little curler to the far post. And we don't score enough of these type of goals. Like We used to be synonymous of scoring goals like this. I feel like if we can add that goal scoring facet to our game, that could help us. But again, the right flank with his left foot, oh, cuts in, cuts in. And he loves going for the uh, the near post with his slots right, that's away from the goalkeeper. Very interesting to see whether he plays left wing or right wing, but personally I think he'll play down either flank. That's the beauty of having him, and I think if we have maybe Madweke and Neto on either flank, that's pretty exciting, right? Again, cuts in, left foot, left foot. Hopefully Reese James is going to be in those areas there. Come on, Maraska, let's see that. He's at the near post, cool. I mean, far post, cool. Oh, okay. This is what I mean. There's dead the ball then. Finds his man at the far post. He's confident playing these crosses early in the box too. Like he's not delaying it. He's not putting too much power into them. These are crosses that his teammates can attack the ball with. But anyway, that's like one of his trademark shots here. The little like disguise shot to the near post. Again, look at the strength. The Cruyff turn. Oh, and the explosion to space. That was nice play. They thought they had him controlled then. Two man on him. And he's in control of that situation. Managers had to change their systems when they played against Wolves because that's respect the threat of Neto on the counter attack, right? And the space that if you afford him, he will punish you with. <sighs> yeah, he had a good game against us last season. <sighs> Too dangerous. And that's it. That is that is the net that's the Neto assist. That is the Neto assist right there. Goes to the byline, goes to the box, boom. Cut back cross to find a striker. If you're a striker, ideally, you're going to love playing with Neto, yeah? You're going to love playing with Neto because he's going to create so much space for you in that box based on the attention he commands. Uh, and he has the ability to, to play with his head up and then find you. Whenever he's on a run, the second thought in his mind is, where is my striker? Where are my teammates supporting me? How am I going to play this pass back? How am I going to dribble to create the space for the cutback? And like I said, you know, Wolves were synonymous with, you know, not scoring goals, having difficulties in front of the net, not taking their moments. Is there any surprise once Neto was like a full part of that first scene, that goal scoring now started to come back to life and started to make a lot more sense. Oh. Yeah, this guy's um, too cold, man. I'm just thinking to myself, listen, in pre-season, we've seen many moments where, ah, uh, yeah, come on, man. Like I said, Neto is a cold player. Like, we've known this for a few years now. He's like one of those talents everyone knows that was ready to go to the right club at the right time. And that club's now us. Obviously, I want him to score more goals. He's an assist merchant from last season, but this is what I mean. He can be that match winner as well, too. He has this in this game. He can go to a higher level. Hopefully with us, we can unlock something in him and produce more of these moments. Shooting either foot, assist either foot. I mean, come on, this is like a rare talent to have at the highest level, right? Not many wingers have this ability with either foot. He's a very brave uh, guy on the ball, which I really like. And he's confident using both feet. Oh, the little, oh, that was a nice skill, man. He's just like a Duracell bunny, right? Just non-stop acceleration. Goes, 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 goes. You know what I mean? Just deads the ball right here to attract his man to come onto him. So he can then fool him by doing the little La Creta, uh, La Quaqueta away from him into the space. And his head was up when he does these actions. His head is up, head up, head up, head up and keeps possession and plays it back. That's the right move. Ideally, he wants to play that cross first time, but he's too smart for that. Ooh, yeah. These moments right here, these moments right here, like when he's like slowing the ball down. If you're a defender, you're panicking because you're thinking to yourself, this guy can beat me four different ways. He can just beat me for pace on the outside. He can cut inside and beat me. 
You can play it back to a teammate. There's so many things you can do. And most times, when you don't know what to do, your next best option is to give a foul away, right? So hopefully these fouls he accumulates next season won't lead to any injuries, fingers crossed. But I do think that he can add to the dynamics of Maraska's system. Because as I've said, you're looking at Mudrick and Sterling not bringing that consistency 1v1. It's not enough when there's a big onus on wide threat under Maraska. Left foot dribbling, left foot, left foot. Oh, that was good defending by Matip not to stick his leg out. Instinctively, most people are doing that, right? But again, look at the left foot right here, bro. Look. Nah, he's too dangerous. Now, he's got no teammates in the books, which is ridiculous. That won't be an issue with us, with Cole Palmer and Kunku, and hopefully Miko being the guys attacking these spaces in the books. And it still led to a goal too, which is a mad thing. <laughs> Like, that was not a very, like, big area. His only option then was to play that low-driven cross across goal. Perfectly weighted, perfectly weighted pass. And it's that good, in fact, that his teammate just has to take a shot. And fortunately, it was enough to go in the back of the net. Oh, mad first touch. Yeah, Enzo, yeah, yeah, no chance, mate. Absolutely none. Oh, but personally, I think he might start on the left flank for now. I think when you have maybe like the offensive eight, that's going to be having a lot of onus to be involved in the attack and link up with the striker. I think having his width, especially with Gusto and Verting, um, that would be the best option for balance at the moment. But I think he'll play down either flank, to be honest with you. <sighs> yeah, this guy makes too many things happen for Wolves. This, this really is the Neto show. I think this is a great comp that, that showcases a lot of the good things he did last season. The threat he brings. His performances in the big games. Liverpool, City, us. Everton, I mean, you know, this guy's, um, yeah. I think he's definitely ready for the next level for sure. Just a little nice step over there. Oh. And these crosses, these Maresca type of Man City-esque type of crosses that they like, you know, they encourage their players to play these um, crosses on the floor. Nah, 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 Kunya, that's awful, mate. I'm sorry, are you nuts? You pointed to where you want the ball. Now was like, I've got you, bro. How is this your end action? <laughs> nah, I'm sorry, one more time, that makes no sense. <laughs> That's a fumble, man. That's a fumble. But anyway, if you're Nico, if you're a Simhen or a Moradion, this is your bread and butter, right? That's it. Pedro Neto. Listen, is he someone I would have personally gone out my way to sign? No. But am I upset with this move? Do I think he's a flop? Absolutely not. I think he's a massive talent. I'm actually happy to see him find this resurgence back in his career because... If not for these nasty injuries, he'd be at this level already because he was that good when he first announced himself at Wolves and he showcased what he's about. And I think last season was the best demonstration of more life to come from Pedro Neto. And I think this is the new life we need in this team under Maresca. So my friends, share your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about Pedro Neto signing? Are you excited? Are you not? All opinions are equal. Let us know where you fall below in the comment section. And on that note, I'll catch you man soon. Cool.